You dared break the rules. You dishonored the dead. Now, face my judgment. Take the stage. Fight for your very souls as my play comes to life! Only one might save you! <laughs> Trickster god, rebel of heaven! Sun Wukong, the Monkey King! Welcome to the theater! This will be my masterpiece! Hello everybody, Raven Knight here. I hope you're having a great day because I know I am. Today, as of the recording of this video, The Warrior's Den was released that reveals to us the Title II update for For Honor Year 7 Season 3 Deceit. Guys, this has been one I've been looking forward to for a long time. I'm going to be real honest. This season has been outstanding. And I was really excited to see what they would do for their Halloween season, for the Halloween event thing. I've been really excited, very interested to see what they're going to do. And it did not disappoint. For those of you all who joined me in the Warrior's Den live stream, thank you guys so much for coming. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. But if you didn't come, maybe you had school, you had work, you just didn't want to sit through a three-hour long video, hey, I completely understand. And for you guys that couldn't make it, you came to the right place. This video's whole point is to give you guys a brief rundown on everything that was said so that you guys know what to expect in a week when the Title II update is released. Before we get started though, two things I want to make clear. Number one, for those of you guys who are brand new to the channel or new to what I do, this channel is entirely sponsored by you guys. Um, and if you guys want to help keep this channel going and help support this channel going forward, there are two ways you can do it. If you look in the description down below, you'll see a link to my Patreon where you can become a patron and donate up to a dollar a month, or my Teespring store where I have some awesome merch, including some temporary Halloween merch, which will go away sometime in November. So definitely go check those two links out. Go support this channel. It would mean the world to me if you did. And secondly, because the season has so much to do with Journey to the West and Chinese folklore, y'all may not know and would like to know that I have a second channel called The Raven's Writing Room where I am currently doing an audiobook style reading of Journey to the West. I'm currently on chapter four of the reading. I've done chapters one through three. You can go and check it out there and give a listen and learn all about Journey to the West and what the story is all about. You'll also find a lot of other kind of stuff there, including my writing advice, some other stories that I'm creating, and just some awesome content overall. So if you'd like to see more of my work, learn some more about Journey to the West and everything else, go check out that. The link will be in the description. Thank you guys so much. And now, on to the updates. First and foremost, the thing that everyone's super excited about is the Halloween event mode that we have all been waiting for. So to understand this Halloween event mode, you need to understand the lore that is going on in this season. So what is going on? And I can't blame you for being a little bit confused. It's been a little bit hard to follow indeed, so I will break it down. The Wu Lin have set up this huge festival, which is a festival of the dead, a festival for the ghosts of their ancestors, kind of like a Mexican Day of the Dead, but for China. And it's actually based on a real festival, and you can hear all about that in my previous Warriors in recap uh, that I did when the initial season was released. So, what's going on? So the Wulin are holding this festival, and they've invited all the other For Honor factions to come and join. The problem is there are rules to this festival. You don't eat the food offered to the ghosts. You don't uh, sit in the chairs provided for the ghosts. You don't fight after dark. There's a lot of rules you got to follow. And the truth is the Wulin know that the other factions cannot possibly remember or follow all these rules. They're starving. They're hungry. They're exhausted. They want to eat, so they're going to eat the sacred food meant for the ghosts. And they know what this means. The ghosts will become angry and come out to get their revenge. And one particular ghost has become very interested. Her name is Bai Gu Jing. Bai Gu Jing, which means white bone demon, is a famous demon of the underworld who is also famous because she featured in Journey to the West as an enemy of Sun Wukong. She has shown up and is capturing the soldiers to be part of her own personal theater production, which leads into the Halloween event of the season. 
Essentially in this Halloween event, you and three of your teammates are going into a PvE game mode where you'll be fighting in stages against different bots that are released by Bai Gu Jing to challenge you and fight you. In order to accomplish the mission and to defeat the game mode, you have to figure out the puzzle and message behind each of the stages. For example, in one stage, you may end up fighting a boss opponent who can corrupt you by hitting you. You may end up fighting another group where you have to execute them in a certain order. And Bai Gu Jing will give you hints as to what you're supposed to do, but the key is communication and teamwork are going to be essential to beating this. So you might want to get a microphone or you might want to bring some friends with you. At the end of the day, you're going to want to figure out how to do this. Now Bai Gu Jing is doing all this to play around, but by the third stage, the hero skin will be appearing. Sun Wukong himself will drop in, and we'll talk more about that in a minute, to help you fight against Bai Gu Jing. She gets very upset by this, and eventually, in the fourth stage, will fight against you herself. She's basically a Zhan Hu in moveset, but she will activate her boss monster mode, and in that mode, you better be prepared for a real fight. And the way that the developers talked about this, the art style that went into this, the time and energy it took to really set this up, the motion capturing, the colors, the textures, the designs, it all blew me out out of the water. It looked so good. It actually brought a bit of a tear to my eye because I was so impressed with what they did. This kind of thing is what I want to see from For Honor. The exploration of culture and art and design and story, it's all blowing up here and it looks so, so phenomenal. So definitely try out the Halloween game mode. I know I'm going to try it out. Me and Havoc are already talking about what we're going to do. Um, it's going to be so much fun, guys. I can't wait to do it with you guys and for you guys. Definitely look forward to that. It's going to be a really cool Halloween mode. Now, on from that, we have the hero skin, and like I said, it is a Shaolin hero skin called Sun Wukong, or the Monkey King. Now, as you probably guessed, it is based on the actual Monkey King of the Journey of the West story, and let me be real, I'm going to go ahead and say this, and I know that this is a bold statement, but I think you'll agree with me. This is the best hero skin For Honor's ever had. Like, okay, look, I like Maiko, okay, and Vela's really good too, they're all good, like, okay, I can't think of a hero skin that I absolutely hate, even Bolthorn, which I think was a weaker one, was still okay. This, though? better than all of them just blows them all out of the water there is no competition the sun wukong hero skin is absolutely top tier it looks so good the design the way it's a mixture of human and monkey styling the fur texture the presentation of a tail the way the staff looks the facial design the armor texture it all looks incredible and before you guys wonder oh well you know i like it but there's not a lot of cloth to customize with color guess what you can customize the color and material design of the eyes and the fur of Sun Wukong, giving you almost unlimited possibilities in terms of color mix mashing. It's going to be amazing, and quite frankly, I am fully expecting the next few weeks after this releases to have the maps just full of Sun Wukongs running around, just little monkeys running all over the map. It would be awesome if they also added like a monkey sound effect, like Sun Wukong actually screeches or howls like a monkey. The problem is, this will also get a little bit confusing because I can't tell if Sun Wukong just took the field or if a griffin is showing up. Either way, it's going to be a really awesome party. I am very much looking forward to Sun Wukong Kong showing up. This is going to be so, so sweet. And yes, they did say that Sun Wukong will come with some lore that goes along with Bai Gu Jing. Now, obviously, the Journey to the West has its own lore for these two, so I'm curious to see what For Honor will do. I'm not against them taking some liberties, but I do want to compare the two, so look forward to that when that happens. Speaking of armor variations and armor styles, we're getting knight and samurai armor stylings again. No, we're not getting Viking, Wulin, or Outlander this season, because like they said, they're, you know, skipping each season. And the designs this season look really good, actually. They're very cleaned up. The knights have kind of white texture and color, while the samurai have red, and it looks very nice. Most of them look really, really good. I'm definitely going to be fighting to get some of them, especially the wardens, which looks great. And also, the Highlander is getting two brand new armor variations altogether. Now, now, some people are kind of split on them. I think they look really good. They're clean shaven and they've got a new set of armor to them, which I think looks great. So I'm looking forward to seeing these and I can't wait to get my hands on them. So if you guys like armor sets and want to get some uh, different For Honor, For Honor fashion kind of stuff going on, definitely look into these. It's going to be a fun ride. So with all that out of the way, let's talk about the rest. It's not nearly as big, but let's talk about some of the other minor stuff going on. There's going to be some temporary Halloween event stuff coming, including an illustrious outfit, a unique execution that ties into Sun Wukong, which I think looks really cool. There's going to be a unique battle outfit and some effects that are all temporary. Overall, it all looks really good, especially the execution. I'm very much looking forward to getting that. 
there's also going to be some quality of life updates and i actually really like these quality of life updates they're changes to the hero roster inventory first of all you're going to be able to cycle through inventory a lot better so let's say that you're looking at ornaments and you start at the very top of the ornaments page if you scroll all the way down or all the way to the side on your ornaments inventory page usually you have to stop there and then reverse and go back up or to the right or left but now you can cycle so if I go all the way down I can hit down again and it'll pop me right back up to the top so you can cycle through your inventory a lot easier you also get a filtering and organizational aspect to your inventory now so you can now filter what kind of stuff you want to see so if you're looking at executions for example you can uh, filter it by saying I want only unique executions to Shaolin or only universal executions that anyone has access to or seasonal executions or executions that I haven't unlocked yet or anything of that nature you can now organize and filter out things that you really need including organizing based on what is unlocked versus what isn't unlocked A to Z or Z to A which ones I've gotten more recently that kind of thing it's going to be a very unique way to look at your inventory which will change the way people do things and also encourage people to be a little bit more creative in what they look for which I think is only going to help out the game it was a great idea and I'm glad they're implementing it now there's also going to be a change in the menu screen whenever there's a temporary game mode event or some kind of event mode going on it will be at the very top of the screen above multiplayer matching which is where you want to go to click on to let you know not only how much longer the event is going on but also allow you to get immediate access to the event itself so that means for example when this temporary Halloween event gets started you'll be able to click on that and it will give you quick access to seeing what's going on very very cool am I right so those are the quality of life updates let's talk about balancing now as I've said many times before Balancing isn't my forte. If you want to hear more about that kind of stuff from an objective category, you would go to someone like Havoc or Freeze or John DeLiner or something like that. But if you want my opinion on it, well, listen up, here's what's going on. It's not big, but it is something I, that I think JC is very excited about since he spent a lot of time talking about it. So here's the change. All characters who have a dash forward bash that is not chargeable will have it will have the timing of a change to 433 milliseconds the only exception to this is Medjai's axe stance now why did he do it according to him it was to help with competitive play essentially at 300 millisecond dodge forward bashes they're almost unreactable making it very hard to deal with but at 500 milliseconds they're very easily reactable and very easily avoidable making it more difficult to get openings at 433 that seems to be the sweet spot where it's not so unreactable that you can't dodge it but it's a lot quicker allowing for the potential of more openings so he wanted to experiment and give that a shot I think it was a good idea I think it's going to be very interesting and I'm curious to see how it goes now for me as a casual player it's probably not going to change all that much for me but I'm curious to see what that changes for the community now why wasn't it done for Medjai because right now Medjai's axe stance according to JC is underperforming so they decided to keep his dodge forward bash uh, the same as it was just to allow him to still have that opening he requires now you might be thinking, well, what about characters like Warden or Warmonger who have charged uh, forward do dodge bashes? They're staying exactly the same. Those won't be changing. So it will just be the uh, normal dodge forward bashes. And you might be thinking, wait, Raven, interestingly enough, you mentioned Warden. Didn't Warden get a Hero Fest? Yes, as of today, Warden got a Hero Fest where he got a brand new execution. And I'll be talking about that in the future once we get the next three Hero Fests later, which will be for Aramusha, Zhang Hu, and I believe Shaolin. So after all those come out, then I will go back and grade all of these new stuff. I actually do like Warden's Execution. It's not my favorite that he's got, but it actually is pretty cool, and we will talk more about that later. And that about wraps up everything for this Heroes Warrior, for this Warrior's Den, and for all the hero stuff that we want to hear about. How do you guys feel about this? I, for one, think it's going to be phenomenal. I think it's going to be an outstanding Halloween season. I'm very excited for it. Havoc and I have already been in communication about playing some rounds together and doing some really cool stuff with it. I'm excited to get to compare the lore between what they do here and the actual Journey to the West story. I'm just excited to get my hands on all this, guys. It's going to be so, so, so fun. I can't wait to get on with you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know down in the comments your thoughts, comments, concerns, and your praise and criticism. Always love to see it. Thank you guys so much. And as always, I will see you in my next video. Take care.